Hello American stars who died today family and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Roger Cook, beloved landscaper and longtime contributor to this old house, passed away on August 21st at the age of 70 after a long battle with illness. As a cornerstone of the PBS Home Improvement series for over four decades, Roger was much more than just a landscape contractor. He was a cherished member of the This Old House family and a guiding light for millions of viewers who turned to him for his expertise and down-to-earth wisdom. Born and raised in Woburn and Burlington, Massachusetts, Roger's love for the outdoors was evident from a young age. He pursued this passion academically, earning a degree in wildlife management and conservation management from the University of Maine. In 1982, he and his wife Kathy founded K&R Landscape in Woburn, a company that would eventually become synonymous with the highest standards of landscape design and care. Roger's journey with this old house began in 1982, when the show was still in its early years. His full-time role on the show kicked off in 1988, and from that point forward, he became the go-to expert for all things landscaping. Known for his soft-spoken yet no-nonsense approach, Roger had a unique ability to make even the most complex landscaping tasks seem manageable for the average homeowner. His segments on the show were not just educational, they were a source of inspiration for countless viewers who sought to create their own outdoor havens. In 2018, Roger shared with fans that he would be stepping back from his full-time role due to health issues. Despite his reduced presence, his legacy continued to flourish through the gardens he designed, the lessons he imparted, and the warmth he brought to every episode. Roger Cook's impact extends far beyond the television screen. His dedication to environmental conservation, as seen in his lifelong efforts to promote sustainable landscaping, will continue to inspire future generations. In his honor, his family has requested that mourners plant a tree in their local communities a fitting tribute to a man who spent his life cultivating beauty and life. Roger Cook will be deeply missed, but his legacy will live on in the landscapes he shaped and the hearts he touched. Didi O'Hearn, a beloved and highly respected figure in the television industry, passed away on August 12th at the age of 63 after a courageous battle with lung cancer. Didi was known not only for her exceptional talent as a programming executive, but also for her kindness, warmth, an unwavering dedication to her work and colleagues. Dee Dee's career in television spanned several decades, during which she left an indelible mark on the industry. As Senior Vice President of Programming and Development for the Food Network and Cooking Channel from 2014 to 2017, she was instrumental in shaping the network's identities and launching new, innovative programming that resonated with audiences. Her work earned her six Emmy nominations, a testament to her creativity and vision. Perhaps one of Dee Dee's most notable contributions was during her 16-year tenure at A&E Networks. As Vice President of Nonfiction and Alternative Programming, she developed the iconic reality series Gene Simmons' Family Jewels, bringing the legendary rock star's life into viewers' homes with authenticity and humor. She also served as an executive producer and supervising producer for the acclaimed series Biography, where her insightful approach allowed her to delve deep into the lives of figures like F. Scott Fitzgerald, Mike Tyson, and Sylvester Stallone. Her ability to connect with her subjects and present their stories with empathy and depth earned her admiration throughout the industry. Colleagues remember Dee Dee as a beautiful soul who brought a golden touch to every project she worked on. Her modesty, caring nature, and kindness endeared her to all who had the privilege of knowing her. She was more than just a colleague. She was a friend, mentor, and a beacon of positivity in an often challenging industry. Dee Dee is survived by her husband, Richard, her sons, Ian and Michael, and her four brothers, William, Robert, Michael, and Tierney. Her legacy will continue to inspire those who knew her, and her contributions to the world of television will be remembered for years to come. In her honor, Donations can be made to the NYU Langoni Health Perlmutter Cancer Center. Stephanie Sparks, who passed away at the age of 50, was a beloved figure in the world of golf, both as a talented player and as a charismatic television personality. 
Her journey through the sport and her subsequent career in broadcasting left a lasting impact on all who knew her and followed her work. Born on July 18, 1973 in Wheeling, West Virginia, Stephanie's passion for golf was evident from a young age. She played golf at Duke University, where she quickly distinguished herself as an All-America golfer. However, her promising career as a player was cut short by a wrist injury, forcing her to leave the team before graduating in 1996. Despite this setback, Stephanie's accomplishments as an amateur golfer were remarkable. She won prestigious titles such as the 1993 Women's Western Amateur, the Women's Eastern Amateur, the West Virginia State Amateur, and the 1992 North and South Women's Amateur at Pinehurst. After graduation, Stephanie joined the Futures Tour and eventually earned her LPGA card in 1999. Her time as a professional golfer was brief, but she remained a respected figure in the sport. In 2000, after undergoing back surgery, she retired from professional play. Stephanie's transition from the golf course to television was seamless. She began her career at the Golf Channel as a production assistant and quickly moved in front of the camera. Her television debut came in 2004 when she played Alexa Sterling in the film Bobby Jones, A Stroke of Genius. Shortly after, she began hosting Golf with Style on the Golf Channel, where her warm and engaging personality shone. She also co-hosted several editions of The Big Break, bringing her knowledge and enthusiasm for the game to a wider audience. Her work on playing lessons with the pros further solidified her reputation as a knowledgeable and relatable figure in the golf community. Stephanie Sparks will be remembered for her contributions to golf, both on and off the course. She leaves behind a legacy of passion, dedication, and grace, inspiring countless others with her love for the game. She is survived by her parents and her sister, who, along with her many fans, will cherish her memory. Terry Hayden, who passed away at the age of 75, was a pioneering force in the world of Irish entertainment. As an agent who guided the careers of many of Ireland's most celebrated actors, including Gabriel Byrne, Brendan Gleeson, Ruth Negga, and Domhnall Gleeson, Terry left an indelible mark on the industry she so passionately served. Born Theresa Marie O'Connor on April 26, 1948, in Derry, Northern Ireland, Terry's journey into the world of talent representation was anything but conventional. With a background in economics and finance, she initially pursued a career in broadcasting at RTE, Ireland's public broadcaster. However, it was her keen foresight and love for the arts that led her to establish the agency in the early 1980s, a time when the Irish theatre, television and film industries were on the cusp of significant growth. Encouraged by Gabriel Byrne to step into the role of an agent, Terry quickly became known for her fearless negotiation skills and unwavering dedication to her clients. She was not one to seek the limelight, but her impact was felt across the industry, both in Ireland and internationally. Terry's ability to secure the best possible deals for her clients, often working behind the scenes without any personal stake in the projects, earned her immense respect from those who knew her. Despite offers from major Hollywood agencies to buy out her business, Terry remained steadfast in her independence, always prioritizing the needs of her clients over lucrative opportunities. Her pride in her profession was evident in the way she regarded it as a privilege to represent Irish talent. In 2023, Brendan Gleeson dedicated his IFTA award for the Banshees of Inna Sharon to Terry, a testament to the profound influence she had on his career and the careers of many others. Terry Hayden is survived by her husband of 42 years, Brian Palfrey, her son Carl, who now directs the agency, her daughter Lisa, and five beloved grandchildren. Her legacy will continue to thrive through the actors she championed and the agency she built with such care and dedication. Robert McNeil, the distinguished Canadian-American journalist and television news anchor, passed away at the age of 93 due to natural causes. Known affectionately as Robin to his friends and family, McNeil leaves behind a legacy that forever changed the landscape of public broadcasting. Born on January 19, 1931 in Montreal, McNeil's early life and education took him across Canada, from Halifax to Ottawa, where he graduated from Carleton University in 1955. His journalistic career began in London, working for ITV and Reuters, before he moved on to become a correspondent for NBC News in Washington, D.C. 
It was during his time with NBC that McNeil found himself in the midst of one of the most significant moments in American history, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, an event he reported on from the ground in Dallas. McNeil's true rise to prominence, however, came during his tenure with PBS. In 1975, alongside Jim Lehrer, he co-created the Robert McNeil Report, which later evolved into the McNeil-Lehrer NewsHour. This groundbreaking program set the standard for in-depth, thoughtful news coverage, becoming the first hour-long nightly news broadcast on American television. McNeil and Lehrer's partnership was one of mutual respect and professionalism, anchoring the show together for two decades until McNeil's retirement in 1995. Even after stepping away from the anchor desk, McNeil continued to contribute to the program and the world of public television. Beyond his journalistic achievements, McNeil was a passionate advocate for the English language. His love for linguistics led to the creation of the nine-part series The Story of English in 1986, which explored the history and evolution of the English language. This series, along with its companion book, remains a testament to his intellectual curiosity and dedication to education. Throughout his career, McNeil received numerous accolades, including an Emmy Award and the honor of being named an Officer of the Order of Canada in 1997. He was also a cherished member of the artistic community, serving as chair of the McDowell Colony's Board of Directors for nearly two decades. Robert McNeil's legacy will endure through the countless lives he touched with his insightful reporting, his dedication to public broadcasting, and his contributions to the understanding of language. He is survived by his children, including his son, award-winning scenic designer Ian McNeil, and his daughter Allison, who confirmed his passing. His impact on journalism and education will be remembered for generations to come. George Gilby, the beloved English television personality, passed away tragically at the age of 40. George was best known for his appearances on the popular Channel 4 series Gogglebox and his memorable stint on Celebrity Big Brother. George made his first appearance on Gogglebox in 2013, joining the show alongside his mother, Linda, and his stepfather, Pete McGarry. The family quickly became fan favorites with their candid commentary and warm dynamic. George's witty remarks and down-to-earth personality resonated with viewers, making him one of the show's standout stars. In 2014, George took a bold step by entering the 14th series of Celebrity Big Brother, where he charmed both the audience and his fellow housemates, eventually finishing in fourth place. Although his decision to participate in Celebrity Big Brother led to his family's temporary departure from Gogglebox, George's presence on television remained strong. He and his family returned to the show in 2016, much to the delight of fans. George's infectious humor and genuine nature made him a cherished figure on British television. In his personal life, George faced challenges, including legal issues that garnered public attention. Despite these setbacks, he continued to be a devoted father to his daughter, born in 2016, and remained a loved member of his community. Tragically, George's life was cut short due to a workplace accident while working as a self-employed electrician. He sustained fatal injuries after falling through a skylight while working on a roof in Shoebury Ness. His untimely death has left a void in the hearts of his family, friends, and fans. George Gilby's legacy will be remembered for the joy and laughter he brought into the lives of those who watched him on television. His authentic personality and warm spirit made him a beloved figure, and he will be deeply missed by all who knew him. Breaking news, Hollywood icon Danny DeVito, beloved for his quirky and unforgettable roles, is as recognized for his distinctive stature as he is for his acting prowess. Standing at 4F10 in, DeVito's height is attributed to a rare genetic condition known as Fairbanks disease or multiple epiphyseal dysplasia. This chronic disorder affects the development of cartilage and bones, resulting in shorter stature, generally ranging between 4.5 to 5.5 feet. According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, med can lead to premature cartilage deterioration, often causing early onset arthritis. Despite these physical challenges, DeVito has seldom discussed his condition publicly, though he has offered glimpses into how it shaped his early life and career. Growing up, DeVito faced bullying and felt out of place in social situations like school dances, but he never let it hold him back. DeVito has cleverly embraced his unique traits, 
often using humor to reflect on his height's influence on his career. He once quipped, On a really good day I'm five feet short. It's pretty difficult for me to play anything but the little guy. I don't play a good victim, so I'm always the nasty little guy. This self-aware outlook has not only defined his roles, but also underscored his resilience and ability to turn challenges into strengths, making him one of Hollywood's most enduring and admired figures.